A few days ago, I got on the topic of making soap with my grandmother. And when she was a little girl on the Great Northern Peninsula, they would make their own soap. And today, I'm going to make soap using a more modern method, and I'm going to tell you how they made soap in the past. In my soap, I'm going to be using food grade lard, lye crystals, and cold water. Back when my grandma would make soap, they didn't have enough pork to really render fat that was like rare, so they'd actually use cod oil. And instead of having lye crystals that you can get at any hardware store, they'd have to shave lye, which is really dangerous considering this is corrosive. Measurements are really important when you're making soap, because if you have too much of one ingredient, it could make it really bad, especially if you have too much lye, because then you can burn yourself when you're using the soap. Our measurements are 454 grams of lard, 164 grams of water, and 58 grams of lye, which is the exact measurements we need. Grandma, my grandma, she probably didn't have weight scales when she made it, so theirs probably was a lot less exact and probably a lot more dangerous. First things first, we have to render the lard to a liquid. I don't know what it's called when it's a liquid, but we have to render the fat, which turns to a liquid. Normally, all this soap making would be done in a shed because of the lye back then, because it's really dangerous to have in the house, but I'm doing it under controlled measures, so it's pretty good. Next thing we have to do is we have to mix the water and the lye. This can be pretty dangerous considering that lye becomes corrosive and generates a lot of heat when it is mixed with liquid or becomes moist. That's probably why they did it in the shed when my grandmother did it. So I'm going to mix that now. You have to dissolve it until it gets completely clear. Now I'm going to mix the lime water, as you can see it has completely turned clear, with our liquid fat. You can see that. Um, okay. Uh, oh, that's good. Now that I've done this, I have to keep stirring and stirring this until I get the consistency of, of like a thick pudding. And then we'll be able to put it in its mold. This step takes about an hour, and you just keep stirring until you get the right consistency. As you can see, we now have a pudding consistency because we left the soap overnight. And we're going to pour it into our silicone mold. Normally my grandma wouldn't have a silicone mold and they put it on a tray and they cut it into soap cakes but I'm not doing that because it's easier but um, we're not. We're going to make one traditional and three non-traditional the traditional one won't have any dyes or scents but the three other ones will have dyes and scents now I'm going to be using some lemon extract to give it a scent and some green food coloring. Mix that in. It gets all over because it normally doesn't smell all that great. Food coloring. Okay, for our last and final step, we're just going to put the soap in the oven under the light and it can saponify, which means it turns solid pretty much. But my grandma would probably just leave it out to dry and that would take a few more days, but this takes two, so think how long they had. The soap's ready now. We've left it in the oven for two full days to spawnify. It's solid now. Now let's take this out. One, two, three. 
three, and four. Now, my grandma will usually use this soap for washing the floor, washing clothes, or for washing your hands after cleaning a fish or a seal. They wouldn't use it to wash the hair. But um, I'm probably going to use this just for washing my hands. This is a good project, but I think going down to Walmart or somewhere, or a grocery store, and buying a thing of soap is much easier. 